Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, let us discuss about cystic fibrosis. So I am going to explain to you about the discovery of the cystic fibrosis and how this uh, recessive disorder occurs and even the mutation, what is the mutation which occurs in that appropriate gene and what is the mechanism behind this cystic fibrosis. Each and everything I am going to explain to you in this video. So please watch the video till the end and coming to the discovery. The cystic fibrosis is a disease which was discovered by 1938 by a scientist called as Dr. Dorothy Anderson. Right? He gave a deep description about the cystic fibrosis. So now coming to the cystic fibrosis. So how we are going to define this disease? Cystic fibrosis is an inherited disorder. It is a genetical inherited disorder that causes severe damage to the lungs, digestive system and other organs in the body. I mean it shows much effect on the cells. For example, if you take the lungs, it shows effect on the respiratory cells. For example, if you take the case of the digestive system, it, so, it shows uh, the effect on the acinar cells. And once those cells will get damaged, then immediately these organs will also get damaged where they will be unfunctional, where they cannot perform its function properly. Right? So this is a inherited disorder which I have said you. So it is a autosomal recessive disorder. So why it is called as autosomal recessive disorder? Let us see here. For example, you are going to take parents as male and female and even the male consists of capital R and small r and even the female consists of the alleles like capital R and small r where capital R indicates unaffected or unmutated gene and small r indicates affected or mutated gene. So here unaffected is nothing but the capital R indicates the capital R allele is pure whereas the small r is an affected gene. It, it means that this small r indicates that there is a person who is infected with the cystic fibrosis. Right. So now we are going to take the male as well as the female parent and you are going to fuse them both and then we will get a FN progeny. If you are going to uh, if you are being confused to draw like this then you can prepare a checkerboard and once you prepare the checkerboard we will get four alleles right and now we are going to get four gametes and now we are placing them four gametes here. So here capital R capital R which indicates that the person who are whose alleles are capital R and capital R are unaffected. That's what we have mentioned here, right? The capital R indicates unaffected. Whereas if you see here, the capital R and small r indicates that it is a it is a carrier gene. It means that there is a presence of the small r, right? Hence it is called as carrier gene. Here also there is a presence of the carrier gene. But in coming to the last case, it is a small r and small r, which indicates that the person will be affected with the cystic fibrosis. Because the small r is dangerous. It means that it is affected gene, which means that the person who are who are attaining this smaller and smaller indicates that the person is affected with the cystic fibrosis disease right so here why it is called as autosomal recessive disorder because the person who is carrying this recessive alleles i mean the capital r indicates the dominant allele and the smaller indicates the recessive allele we all of us know that right so here the person is indicated with recessive alleles and it is called as autosomal recessive disorder right hence it is hence the person is infected with cystic fibrosis disease right so I have said you that this capital R indicates unmutated gene and the small r indicates mutated gene. So why we have mentioned here mutation? Why we are going to uh, why we are going to take here the term as mutation? Because cystic fibrosis occurs only by the mutation. So what is meant by mutation actually? So we know that from the lower classes we are learning what is meant by mutation in such a way that for example if you take a nucleotide sequence and once if you are going to remove this one of the nucleotide in this total dna sequence then that is called as deletion and once you are going to add one of the nucleotide in the place of this loci then it is called as addition and once this deletion or else addition occurs then it shows some similar it shows uh, some type of changes in this dna sequence right and that changes are called as mutation so what is mean by mutation? Either the mutation will also be many types. I mean deletion, addition, you know, all of this uh, causes structural changes in this gene. And once the structural changes occurs, then it shows a particular type of disease. In this case, the cystic fibrosis disease. Okay. So now the cystic fibrosis affects the cells that produce mucus, sweat and digestive juices. So I have said you that the, it, the cystic fibrosis affects only on the cells of a particular organ, right? So here... Here the cells which secrete mucus are called as mucosal cells, right? So mucosal cells will get affected and the cells which produce the sweat are called as cuboidal epithelial cells. So this cuboidal epithelial cells will get affected and the cells which produce these digestive juices are called as acinar cells and even these acinar cells will also get affected once the cystic fibrosis occurs, once that mutation occurs. So hope you would understand what I am saying. 
right so now let us see the total mechanism how this mutation occurs and in which gene this mutation occurs let us see each and every step so i am going to explain you this procedure i mean this uh, mechanism in two cases where the case one indicates pure form i mean where the gene is non mutated i mean the person who is not infected with cystic fibrosis and in the case two i am taking a gene which is a mutated i mean the person who is infected with cystic fibrosis so firstly let us discuss about the case one where the person is unaffected i mean who is not affected with cystic fibrosis so as i have mentioned here the person is not affected with cystic fibrosis so the gene will be unmutated or as non mutated okay so once that non mutated gene is taken here in this explanation then what happens is that normally if you take this is a cell or as i am going to take a mucosal cell so i have mentioned here three cells right mucosal cells cuboidal epithelial cells and acinar cells right for example if you take here mucosal cells and in each and every type of cells there will be a presence of the plasma membrane right outer membrane as well as inner membrane this is the outer membrane and this will be your inner membrane right so here there is a presence of the gene or as a protein and that gene is called as cftr gene which abbreviates that cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator gene don't forget this okay so this will be your intracellular region of the cell and this will be your extracellular region of the cell don't forget we have took the example of mucosal cell so what is the main function of the mucosal cell to release the mucus right so here in the intracellular region what happens is that normally chloride ions as well as the water molecules will be present in the intracellular region and once the cftr gene is non mutated then this gene will be opened i mean this protein will be opened in such a way that the chloride ions which is present in the intracellular region will enter into the extracellular region because the gate has opened right because the ft cftr gene has been opened in such a way that the chloride ions will get passed to the extracellular region and even this water molecules will also get passed into the extracellular region by this membrane right so uh, here once this cl uh, you know chloride ions ions as well as the water molecule will enter into the extracellular region then the formation of mucus occurs right then the formation of the mucus occurs once the formation of the mucus occurs then the person is totally healthy and totally active hence we have took the case one here it has a non mutated gene now we are going to take here case 2 case 2 indicates the person who is affected with the cystic fibrosis which indicates that the person of the gene will be mutated where the mutation of that particular gene occurs so now where does this mutation occurs the mutation occurs at the chromosome 7 and what is that mutation called what is the name of that mutation delta f phi not at mutation don't forget this both points so where does this mutation occurs it occurs at the chromosome number 7 and where does, and what is the name of that mutation is that delta f phi not at so what does this delta indicates deletion what does this f indicates the name of the amino acid which is called as phenylalanine and phi not at indicates the position of the amino acid so by these terms you can understand that the mutation occurs in such a way that the phi not at position of the amino acid indicates the phenylalanine so that phenylalanine which is present at the phi not at position will be deleted will be deleted so that's what i have mentioned in the previous so if you see here what i have mentioned here the nucleotide will get deleted once the deleted occurs then it causes mutation you can see the structural change of this dna sequence right but here the amino acids will be present here right so amino acids will be present where one of the amino acid will be deleted right at what is amino what is the amino acid the amino acid is nothing but the phenylalanine and where it is located it is located at the final at the position of the sequence right so it will get deleted where in such a way that it causes structural change in a gene and that structural change indicates the closure of that gene where that gene will get closed or as that protein will get closed and once that protein will get closed then what happens is that the chloride ions which is present in the intracellular region cannot enter into the extracellular region because the gate has been closed because the protein or as the gene has been closed so why it was closed because this gene undergoes mutation so what is that mutation delta f phi not at mutation which occurs at the chromosome number 7 right so this chloride ions cannot enter into the extracellular region in such a way that it will get reflected back again into the intracellular region only even this water molecules also cannot pass to the extracellular region so once that water molecules and cl minus ions cannot enter into this extracellular region then the formation of mucus doesn't occurs then we can say that this person was infected with the cystic fibrosis disease so this will be the mechanism so now let us discuss about the symptoms to discuss about the symptoms 
especially in the gastrointestinal region the person will be infected with diarrhea fat in stools severe constipations bulky stools and in the respiratory regions the symptoms which we can see are pulmonary hypertension shortness of breath sinusitis or wheezing and the common symptoms which you can see in the person who is infected with cystic fibrosis are acute bronchitis deformity of nails male infertility pneumonia weight loss and salty sweat so these are the symptoms which you can see in a person who is infected with cystic fibrosis disease so hope you got a proper idea about the disease called cystic fibrosis right so hope you would like this video and if you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video you can comment in the comment box and even you can also join us in the whatsapp group for notes so the link of that whatsapp group will be given in the description box so by using that link you can join us through the whatsapp group and you can ask their notes thank you